Aloha, everybody. Everyone, you all remember what that means, right? Good. Hello, I love you, and I'm getting the hell out of here. All right. Um, I'm trying to, I've been trying to write a novel for a very long time now, and I would like to read a section of this novel to you tonight. <clears throat> Morph set down the hammer and looked down over his shoulder as the mist rolled at the edge of the doorway. Horaku had been taken in by the forging, but he too could sense it now. There was a hostile presence coming from the mist. Regardless of who they were standing outside, they were obviously there for one reason, to kill someone. It is very rude to stand there and not answer. If you're planning to kill me, at least have the courtesy to step, of stepping out and taking my life uh, face to face, Morph said while wiping the fort wiping his forehead and looking back over his shoulder. Two figures stepped forth, dressed all in black, but these weren't beastmen. More than likely, they were from the Shirazian Empire, more commonly known as the Shadow Elf Nation. Not much was known about them, but they did perform acts of assassination for the right price. Their faces were hidden behind black cloth that came down from their turbans. The foremost figure spoke. I'm surprised that you even knew we were here. I'm most interested in the other three behind you, however. However, I will give you all this warning. Turn back now. There is no need for bloodshed this night, Morris replied with a smirk on his face. It started with as a snicker from the fog and became a roar of laughter from the small group of assassins, stopping abruptly with a low growl coming from the mist. Oh, don't worry, little boy. You will not only you're not the you're not to be the only one to join in the shade tonight. Your family and people should not have stuck their noses in this affair. Your blood will send a message to the others, young prince. So be proud. But know this, we take no pleasure in chilling a child. <clears throat> well, this will be interesting to see, Haraku said, leaning back, placing a pipe in his mouth. I did not think this, would, this night would yield so many treats for me to see. Morph smirked and turned back toward the furnace, sliding his hands around the hilts. He shifted the blade sideways, shoveling up some coals on the flat of each blade. Spinning around, he flicked the coals at the two standing at the doorway and took off and running. The glowing steel, hot steel, seemed to cut the air. The two shadow elves were distracted momentarily by the hot coals as Morph ran by, slashing the nearest shadow elf, the blade, biting deeply with a sickly hiss. Before the second shut off could move for his own sword, he felt the heat of the blade connecting with his chest. There, finally, their final thoughts was only one wondering how a mere boy had got the drop on them. The three still waiting in the mist for rushed forward, finally revealing themselves as leopard men. Their fur was white as snow and with gray and black spots, <clears throat> which allowed them to remain hidden within the mist. They stood at least a foot taller than Morph, and the mist seemed to fall behind him their attack as if it were alive. Their movements seemed so unrestricted as if the wind was carrying them along, more stunned them all by moving just as rapidly. There was no hesitation or backing away from the rushing beastmen as the two shadow elves fell to the ground. Morph already in motion, rushed towards the blades, drawing back, ready to strike. Razor sharp claws swung out as the first beastman reached the young prince, only catching air. Morph could almost sense it coming, which allowed him to already be ducking beneath the attack. It was as if he had entered a dance, one that seemed natural to him. His instinct told him not to swing, so he pushed off the balls of his feet and slammed his shoulder into the beast man's stomach. As Morph tackled him, he continued to tumble forward, ending up behind all three. They turned and scrambled, but Morph was already on his feet, rushing at them again with the blade, glowing hot blades drawing back. The dance began to fill Morph as it took control of his movements. What seemed to be the largest of the pack swung at Morph's head with a snarl that was met with the hot dragon steel coming upward, surfing his forearm at the elbow. The blade was hot enough to cauterize the wound, so even if he survived, he would not, have, would not be able to reattach it. The other blade was not still either, as the young prince spun on the balls of his feet, bringing it about before the other beast man could attack or dodge away. He caught the sharp end of the dragon still in his chest and up and upward towards his throat. The force of the blow caused the, this creature to fall backwards, limp to the crown, and release and release a low gurgling noise. 
The dance did not stop as the blades sung through the air, coming back in for another drink at the leper man who had lost his arm. However, the one knocked on the ground, scrambled up, throwing himself in front of the incoming blade. The blade sank deep into its chest, but it continued to slash out, trying to strike the young prince. Morph let, da- let the blade go and brought the blade up, his other blade up in defense. There was still enough power to force him backwards, even though the leper man was dead. As it collapsed on the ground, Morph drew the other blade around, ready for attack. The mist thickened, and he could hardly see anything. He heard a low growl echoing as he waited for the attack to come. Scappy! A female voice ac- echoed as it dissipated the fog, dissipated into the air. Morph knew instantly who, who this vo- voice belonged to, and saw the last leper man standing over the other two, his arm missing below the elbow, and he released a roar of anger towards Morph. You will pay for this, for my brother's bloods. A monster like you is no child, and I swear you will pay for this. Thank you. Mahalo.